Welcome back and joining us for a look at the day's market moving news is Roy Mutoni from the Sanlam Investments. Thank you so much for your time, Roy. It seems that everything is making a turnaround today. So the JSC a turnaround into red territory. But the US market's turning around from red to green today as we are seeing a bounce there on NVIDIA. That uh, sell-off was quite brief, wasn't it, for NVIDIA? Yeah, it was brief, but quite brutal. I mean, it was down something like 10% yeah. over a three-day period. It just feels to me, it's not like sentiment has changed or anything. I think the minute they became the biggest stock in the world, I think investors stood back and figured maybe this is a little bit stretched. A few people took profits. And I think on the converse right now, all you're seeing is people saying, look, it's 10% down. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we're bottom fishing now, as, as, as amazing as that might be. So <laughs> Because there's really no new news. I think they're going to have an AGM or a meeting at some stage in the next week or so. Maybe that's what people are looking into, but I think, yeah, this this one's been this one's been the barometer for the market. For yeah, as long yeah. as markets have been positive, this one's been running. Yeah, indeed. Well, let's take a look mm -hmm. at uh, some of the news that came out of the JSC, starting off with uh, Exara. They're coming out with a pre-close interim uh, trading update. There's seeming to be some pressure there on coal production. Um, yeah. yeah, and just some interesting moves that you're seeing there in terms of the uh, coal price that they first saw under pressure, but now seeming that it was recovering, uh, but now seeming that there are maybe some concerns there on the uh, iron ore price. What did you make of that uh, trading update? I think it's symptomatic of everything we're seeing in the markets. Um, first of all, production, they're, they're building a stockpile, which I suppose would be positive for ESCOM, but for them it isn't because that means production is down. They guided their production marginally down as well into the second half. I think you could say first half was below expectations, relatively yeah. poor. They think they might be able to improve in the second half, but nothing really inspiring there. I think it's a reflection of what's happening in commodities, particularly here in South Africa with regards to both exports and local and local consumption. Ah, all right. Another company mm. that uh, came out with numbers today, uh, particularly results, mm -hmm. uh, is Brait. There's been quite a lot that's happening uh, with Brait. Uh, they started off, I think, uh, a few weeks ago telling us about the recapitalization plan. And then yesterday, mm. Ethos said that uh, it is unbundling its uh, Brait uh, stake. And of course, the Brait comes out with results uh, to basically update us on those numbers. What did you make of that? Because they are still in a loss-making position. Uh, their NAV uh, per share also dropped. Uh, yeah, tell us about that. Look, I think Great is three assets, effectively. It's yeah. Virgin Active, the gyms, Premier, which is now listed, and New Look. Um, Virgin Active seems to be performing quite strongly. Um, memberships and m memberships were up. Rates seem to be up. So that one's per performing really well. Premier, we saw the results a couple of weeks ago. Um, and that one, what you saw was solid pricing, good market share gains in bread. They made a small acquisition that, in, that, that diversifies their business a little bit more. Solid management team seems to be running quite well. New Look just seems to be treading water, standing yeah. still, more or less. So I think that, that's the operational story. Outside of that, it's all about the corporate restructuring and the recapitalization and the refinancing um, that this whole conglomerate, well, this whole group needs to, yeah. needs to go through. Mm -hmm. I didn't really uh, see anything significant in terms of the share price movement today, but I know that um, even mm -hmm. yesterday after the uh, announcement by Ethos, the share price was down, and even after the recapitalization was down. What are investors nervous about here? Is this this, this rights offer that's coming? Well, the thing is there's an unbundling first. So, so you, you're not actually clear about what the corporate structure is going to be. Uh. You know that there's an unbundling that's coming. There's, remember, there's also the asset manager, the, whole, the the investment advisor, the rotating group involved as well. Yes. So I think it's just you're, you're waiting for the process to unravel, so to speak, and, and, and for it to get to a point where you know what exactly you're invested in, that you can value, and you know that it's a going concern. So this is something that has been on the go for a long time. Remember, this is mm. the reason why Premier listed um, and then they did a second placement for Premier as well to show up their balance sheet. So it's, it's, it's a story that investors who are interested in the stock have been following for quite a long time. Not much in 
in the form of surprises here. Ah, all right. Before we go to your stock pick, Pepco, because that was down uh, more than a 4% today. Um, and, uh, yeah, I did mention in the news earlier that uh, there's a uh, placement uh, of shares. There. Talk to us about that in simple terms. What does that mean and also how the share price here has reacted? So effectively, one big shareholder that was, I suppose, associated with the Steinhoff Group um, controls this business. And they decided they were going to sell their shares to sell, to, to sell I think it was 400 or 500, 400 million shares, and then they added, they, they, they topped that up. And the way to do that is effectively you tell the, you, you, you go to institutional investors and tell yeah. them, between this time and that time, we're offering all of these shares. And you have an investment bank that stands in between that takes orders um, and, and records who's interested. And they try and get the average price, the appropriate price, uh. where the market price is. And you see, the thing is, it's such a huge amount of shares relative to how you trade it each day. If you try to trade it in the open market, it will collapse the entire thing. Oh, yeah. So you'd rather, you'd rather do it to a group of institutional investors who will all tell you this is the price at which we're willing to take large amounts. Why are the institutional investors interested? This is an illiquid stock. It's very difficult to get large blocks. But in a placement such as this, you can come quite close to fulfilling your demand. So this happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, a, a number of banks were appointed. They spoke to institutional investors, and they said it's a book-building process. Tell us how many shares you want, what price you're willing to pay. And at a certain point in time, they would say, um, on average, we would be able to clear all of these shares at this price. Are okay. you willing to keep your price there or go up or what? Almost like an auction, and then all those shares were placed. So, mm. so now what this big this big investor has been able to sell off ten percent, which it would never have done in the open market. Mm. Um, it's gone predominantly to institutional investors. Then, of course, the next question you'll ask me is: Then why did the share price come mm -hmm. down today? Clearly, the primary buyers don't need to buy because they were all in the placement. Okay. So you can imagine a little bit of demand has been taken out of the market for the day. Uh, um, and it comes down. You should see the price normalizing over the next okay. couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for that, Roy. It was definitely needed. Uh, something else that's needed is your stock pick for today. What will it be? So it's one that we rarely talk about, and that's Telcom. Um, I looked at their results recently, and they seem to be on the right track. They've sold their, they're in the process of selling their masts business, which will bring in enough money to pay down their, to pay down their debt. And then that fiber business is actually quite a solid business. Um, and it's growing really well, particularly at a time when its biggest competitor, which is the massive group that's in Remgro and I suppose Vodacom want to invest in, is struggling a little bit from a capitalization issue. So, so they've got the whole market to themselves. Um, they're, they're growing really well. And, and their mobile business is actually doing better than both Vodacom and MTN. I mean, mm -hmm. service revenue is up high, single digits, whereas Vodacom and MTN were, high, were up um, low, low single digits. So it's one to watch. It's relatively cheap compared to the rest of SA Inc. Um, so let's see. That That's my topic for today. Ah, all right. So thank you so much for your time and for your analysis today, Roy. Much appreciated. Uh, that was Roy Mutooni from Sunlam Investments.